Our first presenter is uh, Henrik Andrén from SLU, and uh, he will uh, share with us his uh, findings on wind power and effects on caper Kaley. So please, Henrik, feel free to share your screen and unmute. So we, now we're going to talk about environment, environmental impact. I listened to the session A in the morning, it was very technical. So now we're going to have the, have the negative impact of power on, on uh, wind power on environmental stuff. And this study is done together with Julia Taubman. She is a PhD student at the Freiburg University. But I promised to have a presentation because she's out in the field at the moment. Uh, and we're um, Capri Kaley, that's Shader in Swedish. It's a uh, charismatic big woodland grouse and it occurs all over Europe, but it's very common in Sweden, Norway and Finland, but it's, it's kind of rare in, in Europe. And that's why the, Nui, uh, the Germans have started studies effect on Capricale in the Alps and, and uh, Bayerische Wald and uh, Black Mountains and so on, because there is really a threatened species and you have really a conflict between wind power and Capricale conservation. And then they wanted to have a, a reference area where Capricale are quite common and therefore they choose an area in Dalarna where they have studied the effect of, of wind power turbines on Capricale. Uh, see I can't really move. So uh, potential effects on, on uh, wind terms on grouse both long term and short term. The most uh, observed is probably the coalitions where animals are actually killed by the turbines. We have not studied that at all. There are some studies on, on willow grounds, uh, Fjellreipa, Dalreipa in Norway, where they have found some, some that it can have a major impact in some areas, but it's not included in this study at all. Uh, they could use avoid using some certain, certain habitats during the construction and the operation. Uh, they avoid mean being close to the turbines for some reason, and that's what we have studied. They can also, and this avoidance can be due to different things, the visibility of the turbine, the shadow, the noise, and other effects of the turbines. Let's see, I should. Uh, they could be having increased, when you do this construction, uh, you build lots of roads, and that can easy, make it easier for predators like red foxes and so moving into the area. So you can actually do it to change in the landscape structure, you can increase the predation risk for these uh, woodland grouse. Uh, and then of course that will have a um, reduced reproduction and increased, the production will decrease because they are nest predators and they can kill the animals as well. So that's what we have done. Um, we have looked at then what is called spatial temporal ecology, where you look, where we put radio colors on the Capricale, and then you can see where they, what habitat they use, how they move around in the landscape, and then we can compare that what is available. That's a simple thing that we often do in wildlife ecology, we study where animals are and what is available. Uh, and then we, this is called resource selections. We have also looked, done some monitoring of, of where we can find signs of capricalis, that's droppings, uh, feathers and other stuff that we can look at in certain plots. And then we have looked at production repro uh, reproduction, this number of chicks per female capricale. Uh, and this is done then in, in Dalarna, Jävleboy, at the border between the two counties, but it's also done in some areas in, in Germany and Austria. And I mean, a perfect study for this as you want to have a study before you do the construction and after the construction. And you want to have a control area where nothing has happened. You want to have an impact area where you have the construction. In Sweden, the study didn't really start it until the construction was already there. So we have a limited uh, experimental design where we have an impact area and a control area. Uh, so what we do then is that we do this resource selection and movement ecology. You capture animals, you put radio color on them, uh, it's GPS locations, so we got very accurate locations where they are, and that the, the, these G GPS locations are transferred to us through mo mobile telephone. So we get thousands of locations, we can get locations every fifth minute. So it's really detailed information where the animals are moving around and where, what habitat they use. Uh, production, it's uh, done in August where you have dogs helping you to find a female, a pointing dog, and then you get the brood, uh, the chickens around her, and you can calculate 
if she has, if she's reproduced or not, if she's been able to pr produce a litter this year or not. You can also count the number of chicks surrounding her. So it's a, in a proxy of production in the area. And then uh, risk of predation. We have used winter tracking uh, along certain, we call it triangles, uh, that you record mammal tracks in the, in the er different areas. So you can have a proxy on, on how many foxes or pine martin there are in the area. Uh, then we used to see what effect winter turbines can have. The easy thing, the start thing, first thing is just the distance to the turbine, where the locations are in relation to what is available. We have used then some uh, GIS layers to count, uh, kind of predict the visibility of the turbines, which is then related to forest height and the landscape, the terrain, etc. You can get the map like the one you have below where red is re really where the turbine is visible and blue is not so visible. Uh, the next thing is that you can have shadow, which is then the sun, which is not the same as visibility because it's the sun, you have to take into account where the sun is. And then you have noise, uh, how the noise is, is distributed in the landscape, which is also effect of stand, the tree height in the stand, etc. And then operation hours, how often they are, uh, how often the wind turbine is working because if it's, it's, it's calm it, there is no noise at all because but on the other hand I mean you have the visibility still. Then this is the experimental area so the the black crosses are uh, wind turbines there's white stars the black stars with a white circle around that's the Capricale lecking because the females they gather together and have a, what is called a lek and then the females come in so we had uh, lecks in this area where we have the turbines, the uh, squares, lightweight squares is we have where we have worked with dogs to find out the uh, reproduction. The yellow dots is where we have looked for signs of capricalis to see if we can find them or not. And the uh, purple triangles is where we have done some snow tracking to see whether we can defend predators. And then as you see we have to the right uh, the impact area and to the left we have the control area with no with no um, uh, wind turbines at all. Uh, and this is then an example. This male was captured at where the yellow star is a lek, and then the, the purple dots is what the animal has used. And the, he was captured 23rd of April, and we tracked him until the 16th of October. So you can see he was very close to the lek too early, and then he has moved around in the landscape. And then, then you can compare what he has used and compare that to random points in this landscape to see if they are avoiding turbines or not and what habitat they use as well because they usually avoid clear cuts as you see here that it's a clear cut here and there's another stand with pine trees that are really avoiding so you have to take into account both the habitat and the effect of turbines in the same analysis and our example the male was captured here at, uh, at the yellow star and then he moved more or less outside the area most of the time. He made some excursions into the turbine area. This is again from uh, mid-April to this is the early early September. As you see, we've got 15,000 radio locations to analyze, which is quite a lot for an individual like this. Uh, so when you do this resource selection, you compare where they have been to what is available by choosing random points. And this is the lecking season, which is April and early May. And we have had eight animals and we do what is called resource selection. So it, on a y-axis, a high score means that's something they select for and the low score is something they avoid. So with increasing sh shadow, they are less likely to be in an area. The, the resource selection function goes down, so less likely to be in an area where there are lots of shadows compared to where there are no shadows. Turbine noise is the same where there are lots of noise, they are less likely to use number of turbines in the area is also related and then number of uh, number of turbines within four 800 meter and the visibility if you see them if they're number they see is high they are less likely to use it so there's some some indication that they are less likely to use a habitat close to turbines in the summertime similar pattern shadow is reducing the uh, the use, noise is reducing the noise, number of turbines within. And here we have a distance to turbine. This is an interesting one because you see below, let's say 800 meter, this seems to use it less. And then above, it's a, 
uh, is more or less like a flat line. Visibility again uh, decrease in distance to roads uh, is also important. They use more habitat further away from roads, but you have a big road network in the construction uh, at, uh, around the turbines. In this case, it's more animals, 11, female, 11 males and four females. So the conclusion here is that we can say that energy facilities had an effect on resource selection up to 800 meters from, from the turbine. Uh, all, but we have a, what is called high collinearity among the predictors. I mean, there's high correlation. If you have a high shadow, you also have high noise and you, you see many turbines and you're close to it. So we can't really identify the mechanisms why they avoid an area close to the turbines. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have any data before the construction or a control area. So we just have radioed animals in an area where you have turbines. Uh, it's a small sample in a number of birds, but we have lots of information about the birds. But to make it more general, we probably need more animals to, to follow. Uh, then this presence absence survey is the black dots. And again, we have looks, looked at the impact and the uh, control area. Uh, we have monitored uh, these grids. It's pine dominated tree, blueberry, bilberries is, the, is very common in, in soil and in the feed layer. And when you look at the presence in this area, the impact area had a lower um, probability to find capricale compared to the control. But it's difficult. Is it really the impact or the control? Were they different before? Or is it is an effect of the wind powers? And that's difficult to judge. And we have tried to analyze it, uh, taking into account what habitat we are in. But we really not, don't want to make a big inference for this. Because if we compare all over Europe, where they have more on, on a before after control, which is the way one should have a design when you do this thing, they can't really see that there is an effect in the turbine area. That's, so that's before you built the turbines and this is after they were there. And then you compare it with a control. And in this case, there are no differences in the presence absence surveys between control areas and turbine areas. So in this case, we can't really say that there is a lower density of, of capricale in, in the turbine areas. But within a turbine area, again, you're less likely to find droppings or feathers or so close to the turbine. In this case, it's about 650 meters from, from the turbines that they're less likely to use. Uh, productivity, uh, we have used this to counting dogs. And then uh, this is from the Swedish area where you have a control and we have the impact area. There were actually more chicks per hen in the, in the, in, in the impact area in, in 2016. But then after that is the same. We can't really say about that the chick hen ratio is different between the, the two, the impact and the control area. If we look at the predation, uh, what we have done in winter, uh, there is a general increase that you have more red foxes in the impact area. In the pine martin is fluctuating, but the variation between this triangle in both the impact and control area is very huge. So we can't tell really whether this that looks like an increase in fox density is really true because the variation is too big here. So to summarize, we can see that resource selection and habitat use is lower close to turbines and there is a threshold around 850 meter. We can't say that there's a general difference between in the presence of capricale between a turbine area and a control area, but within the turbine area there are lower presence close to turbines and in this case the threshold is 650 meter. We can't say whether anything about reproduction between the control and the turbine area I mean, we can't really say that there's any difference, nor can we say that it's a difference in predator presence in the turbine and control area. So thank you.